I'm Microsoft teaming with Microsoft Teams. I'm learning and dreaming with Microsoft Teams. The hub and the teamwork of Microsoft 365 in these four amazing times. I'm Microsoft teaming with Microsoft Teams. Yeah, with Microsoft Teams. I am so excited about my guest today. Today we're meeting with Lego Systems. Now, some cool facts about Lego you may not know. Did you know there's over 400 billion bricks right now on the planet that we spend 5 billion hours every single year playing with Lego and putting those sets together? Seven sets are sold every single second. That's 318 million sets every single year. In 2000, Lego was named Toy of the Century and Lego is the world's most reputable company because when you think about Lego, you think about collaboration and playing together. I was so fortunate that uh, five years ago, I had a chance to go out to Bill in Denmark and meet our guests. I got to go to the Lego headquarters, which is like going to the Willy Wonka factory for me. And I learned so much about the product. I got to see the founder's original desk and learned about the wooden toys, the wooden ducks that they used to make long before they got into making those plastic bricks. I got to see the bricks with the original bottoms where there wasn't those little click pieces there. And I brought a flat Stanley, a project my daughter was doing as we took a tour. So there's a picture of myself and our guest today. So I am very excited to have uh, some friends of mine today on the show from Lego, who I got a chance to meet five years ago already. It uh, has really gone by. So Michael Ulrich, welcome. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Michael, let's have you introduce yourself. We'll have you start. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the role that you play at Lego. Uh, sure, Sim. Uh, Michael Peterson. I'm a senior application engineer in our NGOs computing team. I'm the tech lead on our species five. Uh, I've been at Lego for five years. Um, my role is primarily working with governance, uh, compliance, et cetera, for the entire suite in the Office 365 platform. Not the client stuff so much, but everything Office 365. Yeah, my name is uh, Ulrich Skadhaug Jensen. I've been at Lego for 10 years, so more or less, almost 10 years. So more or less the doubled at uh, Michael. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but um, I work as a product owner for Lego. That means I take care of the Microsoft 365 platform. So the priorities around that, the license part, which is a big thing sometimes, and but also the products, how we implement them together with uh, Michael on the Office 365, but also client side and identity support. I'm responsible for. Awesome. One of the things that I love about your company and, one of the things, and you guys and the way that you look at IT was when I came out, you told me something that has stuck with me since then, which is you embrace technology and collaboration that it's it's in your DNA that embracing technology, embracing collaboration that is absolutely at the core of everything that you do. And it is, as you look at your toys, that's the way that, that people play with the Lego sets and you know the, 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 the connect systems and the robotic systems and everything else and the way that you work. And I was so blown away by how quickly you adopted so many of the technologies. And we're gonna talk about that today, but before we do, I'm going to turn it over to producer Meg. Meg, go ahead, take it from here. Okay, first question. What was the first job you ever wanted as a little kid? Michael, I'll let you go first again. Uh, yeah, it, it's going to sound cheesy, uh, but it was actually as a Lego uh, designer. Uh, that's not exactly what I ended up to, but at least at, at the right company, right? So uh, Lego designer, and that's, I'm not even kidding. That's <laughs> awesome. I love that. All right. Uh, actually, when I was a kid, uh, I was uh, on holiday at my grandparents' place, which was on a small farm here in Denmark, and uh, my summer vacation was there. So actually, being a farmer, I thought that was going to be my way of life, <laughs> the way I wanted to do my life. But uh, Wow, that's very different. All right, question number two. What is your favorite Lego set? Or do you have Legos around you that you could show us? <laughs> I have been. Behind me, I have uh, the roller coaster, and that's one of them. Uh, mostly due to uh, <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> mostly due to uh, it was built by my daughter when she was ten, and now my son is free. He loves to play with it. I had actually a boost engine on it, uh, but we had to take that off. He just liked to use the little crank. Uh, but my, <laughs> my my own one is get fitted. This big yellow wow. crank. Wow. Uh, and this, of course, this was actually the first one I built when I started Lego uh, five years ago. So, uh, so that is staying here in the in the office. That's pretty cool. Or 
Yes. I'll just uh, go beyond. Uh, I prepared a little thing, but that's the uh, our Ford Mustang model. Very nice. Really, really nice car thing. Uh, up on the shelf, I have uh, the Fiat and uh, Fols, or the Beetle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that that's all. So it's cars that I built in my spare do you, time. Do you, do you have a new one you're getting ready to start? Actually, here, I'll show, I'll show mine, the one that I'm getting ready to start, and then I know you have one, too. I got this uh, as a holiday gift. I still have not built it, but I will be soon, but I'm very, very excited to be doing this one. So I have that, and I know you just got a new one, Ulrich. What are you going to be working on next? Uh, I think this is uh, the latest Ferrari. <sighs> going to build Absolutely that one. Absolutely gorgeous. And uh, next week is uh, winter season here in Denmark, so um, I think I'll, I'll have the week off. And I have time to do that. That's awesome. Absolutely. And that will be my next one, also in winter vacation. Uh, there's a lot of glare here, sorry. <laughs> cool. Well, let's let's talk about teams. So um, when I came out, teams had not even really started yet. You guys were really deep into SharePoint and OneDrive and leveraging a lot of stuff. But how has teams changed the way you work? Because you were one of our first adopters of the teams platform. So Either one of you, uh, how has it really changed the way that you kind of move through your day and that the people that you manage, how they leverage it? Well, uh, like other companies, we basically start at, uh, with the chat functions in Teams. Um, we have this uh, culture of uh, now we are on the road of uh, a cloud uh, software as a, sol- as a solution uh, platform like Office 5. We also enable it for our users. So for Teams, uh, we basically enable it. Uh, it was announced on through YouTube actually from you. And oh. we have users immediately the next morning. Oh, when can we get this? Okay, then we just enable it and now we can use it. At that point in time, that meant enable it for everybody. And then suddenly we got a call from Microsoft Denmark that the Teams team from uh, Redmond would like to speak with us because we had a very high adoption very fast. But in the beginning, it was chat mostly. Yeah. And, and that's what we hear from a lot of companies, that if you put it out and don't really train people on it, not make them aware that it's coming, they'll they'll use it as a chat tool. So how did you get folks to stop using it, not just for chat, but to actually start to use it for collaboration, to start to replace some of the other collaboration tools that, that you've used? I think we, we saw a need for a collaboration tools that were kind of governed and controlled by legal IT and not some wild competitions you have out there where we're not in control of, uh, of the data uh, because we haven't decided to be that. And so it was a dialogue with business. Okay, we work in teams or in, in a product team and we are developing these products. How can we come together uh, in a, yeah, come, come together one place, even though we are scattered <clears throat> around the world, to work together on building these, uh, these models and then yeah, go forward with that. So it's more, how can we collaborate on a single topic in a single place? I think right. in one common place. I think that was what we were aiming for. And then just the easiness of it, everything was stored in SharePoint. The chat was consistent. It was asynchronous, and you didn't have to respond immediately. It was not like our Skype for Business, uh, right. where the, when the chat was gone, then what, it was gone, right? It was then have to look in your Outlook for response, etc. But I think it was the comp- feelingness around, okay, how do we actually interact with each other? How can we share files with each other to begin with? And then they found out there was some video recording in it as well, even though it was it was the uh, first time was at that time, it was really not that great, but it was okay. Right. Uh, and they started using that. Um, was there was there a fear that they would use non-approved tools if you know, you didn't say, look, all right, yes, we'll leverage teams and we'll bring this together because if you don't give people a tool to do whatever it is they want to do, they'll go out and they'll go find their own and start to bring it in. So was that a key piece? Because I know that compliance and confidentiality are, are incredibly important to your business. Yes, we, we have approved tools. Uh, we have uh, IP partners. We work with Disney. We work with Marvel. And uh, for instance, if we leak something, uh, from the next coming Star Wars, then uh, right. that would not be great. So no. we, we so we, we need to keep our our data secure, the the pictures, the models, etc. So that's that they have to store this in uh, in a safe location where we know we are in control. So, um, but these are well, 
these designers, they are, well, they're creative people. So they mm -hmm. will always figure a way out. So if we didn't have any tools that we could actually give them, they'll just find another way. But that, that also meant that, um, that we could now give them a tool where they could be safe, we were in control, so they could use that. I think that's uh, the, the good thing to say about this. Yeah, no, a managed environment. Now, Michael, a big part of Lego is you have this incredibly diverse workforce because you've got, you know, designers and engineers, you have first line workers that are working in, in the factory piece of it. So how did that affect, A, the choice to move to teams and managing all these different types of users? Yeah, like most companies, we have uh, blue collar workers. They, they have one specific need. We have the normal office workers, the white collars. But then we have these creative people you talked about, and they are very self-adopting. <laughs> uh, and it, it is them that drives a lot of these things by themselves. And if we have the right tool they can use, they would like to do that, but else they will find a solution. So we have the standard adoption issues a lot of other companies have with our standard office workers and blue colors. They don't necessarily see a change as a positive thing. Right. But then we have these subset of users that really do drive by new stuff and they are normally every time you announce new technologies on from the youtube or whatever we get contacted oh when can we get this when can we get this when can we get this so they That's are very awesome. self-driven self the rest is normal adoption uh, like all other companies uh, but we have this subset that really drive themselves awesome and then by bringing them on board and training them they become the experts for everybody else and start to to drive that internally when people say hey that doesn't work for me yeah it does i've been doing it this way for months and here's why it's better which we've always seen that having champions and first adopters internally really really helps rather than saying this is what we're going to use it's other people saying why aren't you using this we are and here's what we're doing with it so it definitely changes things and you guys are very lucky to have so many people who want to get involved in that. We'll get back to our interview with Lego in just a moment, but I got a chance to sit down this week to chat with Chris McNulty about a brand new product announcement, Microsoft Eva. Let's take a look at that. I'm here with Chris McNulty. Why? Well, because Chris is a great guy and I've known him for a long time, but also Chris is at the center of the launch of one of our newest initiatives, Viva. So Chris, thanks for joining us today. How are you? Oh, it's really great to be here. You know, as we say in the sports world, long time, first time. So yes. <laughs> great to be here on Inside Microsoft Teams. How's you been? I appreciate that. How are you? I'm, How are you been? I'm doing good, but I'm sad that I cannot put large pyramids of Diet Cokes in your office after hours anymore because we're not physically together. So it makes me sad. But let's talk Microsoft Evo. What is Viva, what is this? It's a great question. So at the top level, Viva is our new employee experience platform. And it's a set of branded apps or modules that you can add to Microsoft Teams. No matter what stats you look at, from a business perspective, people know that looking at employee well-being is sort of the key to how do I make all of this sustainable? Right. So these are the four modules of Microsoft Viva. You'll see they're all being delivered through Microsoft Teams. So Connections creates a company-branded application experience. It draws on tools like SharePoint and Yammer. It has some new capabilities to let you integrate actions for things like expense management or health checks or all of the things that people need to do. The way that we forge that culture with targeted communication and personalized information, that's all being delivered through the Connections app in Microsoft Teams. And that's oh, something that's, similar to like intranet, where people are going to intranets and different apps within the intranet to do this. They're now able to do it right from Teams without having to jump between an expense app and all the rest. Exactly. So Insights is built on the platform you have with tools like Workplace Analytics, My Analytics, Glint, and so forth, mm -hmm. being able to provide privacy protected personal nudges, again, delivered through Teams. And when we say delivered through Teams, that extends all the way on to frontline as well as traditional desk or, or browser usage. So helping people protect their personal time, protect their focus time, being able to look not just at the consumption that we have from inside services like Teams, but also let you bring data in from places like Zoom and Slack so organizations can have a holistic view of how people are working with each other. So Topics is using AI to organize information that you have into topics. We 
bring them together in topic pages. You can think of these pages as being essentially AI writing the first draft of your organizational Wikipedia, but not based on outside data, but the content that you have and the signals that we get from the ground. Once that's out there, your experts can go in and review, approve, and curate information, and then those topics get delivered through the apps people are using every day. When you see a highlight in Teams, you can right. hover over it and get a topic card, which is a capsule summary of everything that it, we know about that subject. And that's also being extended into places like SharePoint, Microsoft Search, Outlook, the Office apps, and more. And that's where it's starting to do things like, hey, this email seems to pertain to this meeting, or here's a document that's going to be important for this. So as you take a look at meetings, you start to see things now show up, and that's also part of that, correct? Right. The last major part of Viva is Viva Learning. So Viva Learning, again, is looking at the scope of content that people want to pay attention to. So the learning app lets IT, working with the business, construct an environment to be able to bring courseware, whether it's coming from a place like Coursera, Pluralsight, edX, learning management systems like SAB SuccessFactors, Microsoft's own solutions like LinkedIn Learning, MS Learn, being able to track, target, recommend, and also have courses get suggested to you through the flow of your work. Collectively, that's Microsoft Viva. Awesome. So what's somebody's next step to go, why is this important to me as an IT pro and how is this going to affect me because management's going to want to implement this and how mm -hmm. do I learn more about this and how to get prepared? If you go to Microsoft.com slash Viva, you can find information on each of the modules. You can find information on the business value. We have resource centers where you can experience demos and videos and um, the research that we're using to help justify the ROI around this. And there'll be more to come in the next few months. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate you taking time out. Thanks a lot, Stephen. This week on Tech Workbench, um, the folks at Logitech sent me their meetup system, and I had a great time putting it together and setting up my own in-room conference system. Let's take a look at that. Not everybody has thousands of dollars to go out to go buy really cool, expensive meeting room systems. So I've built one on the cheap. It is the camera that you see there and the remote. Uh, that's also an iPhone remote, which you can uh, use as a soft remote, and there are optional additional speakers, and we'll talk about that. A TV I picked up for about $250 and leveraging an old laptop, I was able to put together a really great meeting room system. So let's take a deeper look. This is my setup with a 50-inch TV with the Logitech uh, meetup sitting on top. Coming out of the box, they give you a wide variety of plug choices. So if you're overseas uh, using different plug types, it comes with it ready to go. But setup is maybe five, six minutes. This is what it looks like on top of my TV. And uh, I have purchased a stand from Amazon, which I'm using along with a little pad that does not come with it. There are mounting options that you can put it on a wall or things like that. But I chose to uh, make it a little bit more portable. And that worked out really well for me. In the back, two cables. I needed a USB-C and power, and that was it. That additional port that you see there is if you want to add that additional microphone. And uh, there's also a lock port, as you can see as well. And I do need to dust back there. I did go out and get a Microsoft wireless keyboard with built-in mouse so that I could do everything from my desk chair. And there is the Logitech Meetup remote. That comes with a mute, a hang up, and call if you're using it as a full soft phone service, Bluetooth if you want to add additional devices or headphones, volume, zoom, camera movement, and then you can set two camera presets, and you'll see what that looks like in a little bit. I attached this to an older Surface Pro device. I added the USB-C hub and HDMI adapter, and then a Ethernet port. One of the things that the Logitech Meetup allows me to do is not have to just sit at my computer when I'm having a meeting like this. I like to walk and talk, so I can go to my number two preset, stand up, and be able to really kind of feel like myself and move around my office a little bit as I'm chatting, which is great. Uh, and really take advantage of the space as I do this. Now, audio video is gonna sound just as good and just as clear. And if I sit back down, it's gonna remember where I was at and automatically pick me back up here. So the Logitech Meetup comes with a 4K Ultra HD camera with 5X zoom, 
There is a full duplex microphone array built into the camera housing that's good for up to about 13 feet. Beyond that, you will want to look at picking up one of the optional expansion mics, but for most small touchdown rooms or offices, it's going to be perfect. There was Right Sense, which is auto leveling for voices, which I found worked really good when I was presenting, when I would get a little louder, it would kind of balance things out nicely. There is a pan and tilt lens with Right Sense, so it will automatically frame, but if you want to kind of have presets for Zoom, uh, again, you can use one of those two preset buttons. It does support Bluetooth speakerphone capabilities, so you can connect this directly, you know, whether you're doing that through your mobile or through another device. Really easy to set up, as you saw, different mounting options. And then they also have software called Logitech Sync that is available for room management if you're managing multiple rooms in these devices that allows you to do everything from update to choose different settings for it. The cost for the meetup is under $900. Total setup for me was around 12, 1300. I did happen to have that Surface device, but you could use a wide variety of Windows devices. So that is the Logitech Meetup, a small conference room or huddle room device, or if you're looking for something a little bit better for home, I would tell you to take a look at the Logitech Meetup. Now with the pandemic, We've heard from so many folks, they did in weeks what they had planned to do over months, uh, you know, that by, you know, people went home in March and by June 1st, they had done work that they had figured would take them the full year, if not longer. I know you guys were Skype on-prem and that changed very, very quickly, Ulrich, on your approach to that and how you were going to move from that. So walk us through that, that process of, you know, pandemic has hit, people are now working from home, what that kind of process was. I think there were, I think we were, we were lucky in somehow because we almost everybody at Lego, if you have a computer, have a laptop. So it was quite easy just to carry your laptop at home, with your home and work from there. So that was mm -hmm. kind of the, and it is, we, we saw that occasionally that people were working from home, but not not in the not in the not, not like in the sense that we see now. today. <laughs> so that was uh, that was the first thing, and so that meant we could just send them home. Then then another thing came. Okay, we need VPN for everybody because we have in in source systems uh, where we actually okay on prem you need VPN. What we do with that we just triple our bandwidth on that and. Uh, purchase a lot of new licenses and we have a direct VPN tunnel. So that was the first, the second thing we did. And then the third thing was that, okay, why do we have Skype for Business on-prem that is integrating with our our video conference platform? That was kind of the going in there. Uh, we couldn't switch to Teams because that wasn't supported at that time. So we're actually waiting for Teams and our video conference system to work together. Right. But as no one was in the meeting rooms, why shouldn't we just uh, change the way we look at teams? So we just made a huge decision two weeks before Denmark closed down, switch to teams, use that platform that uh, you, we know you could scale it up and you proved you did that. Uh, and we knew we couldn't scale our Skype for Business on-prem up because that was just uh, exhausted anyway, just with a few meetings, online meetings we had already. So that was the going into just before the pandemic. That was the advice for the end users, how to work from home, how to use VPN and then Teams. Uh, and I would say that we have planned last year to look at closing down Sky for Business. We are closing down Sky for Business this week uh, instead. So we are actually uh, one or two years ahead of our plans in uh, decommissioning on-premise system here. Wow. So just, uh, yeah, so that's, that's really, really uh, awesome. And the team had uh, done a tremendous job. And that is from... We, we have some offices open, so that is video conference um, interoperability, and it's also our PBX uh, phone system inside Teams, our switch boards, uh, etc. In one year, we we have never imagined we'll we'll get to that stage, but uh, we did it. But wow. that's uh, really good. So, Michael, how do you ensure that you know that there's a quality experience for every end user? Because now you have folks working from home that we're in the office where you can control those environments? Did you look at things like split tunneling or what did you do uh, to do that or enable people if they had good tips and tricks to be able to share that information? Yeah, when, when uh, we, we were a bit proactive on this, so we anticipated that, that, that this would happen in Denmark before it actually did in March. 
So uh, our our team prepared uh, around what can we do about our communication platforms, and decided that, that there was a challenge here to to as Ulrich said to to use us what we had today. Um, so we so we started uh, announcing. We had a very active Yammer community, and people are very self driven in there. So we use those environments to inform them, and then we have the official channels through our internet. Um, and our other colleagues uh, around uh, the runs the event clients, they also start to prepare also these three weeks before. But of course, it takes longer time to upscale a physical installation like VPN with the sure. bandwidth and, and concentrators. So when it hit and now we're going home, we uh, we had a uh, uh, we said recommended that this use team, and that came actually very natural because the Skype performance had to, Skype had to go through our VPN setup. That was still very challenged, even though the, the work had started. So the performance for teams was simply so much better. So we were helped a lot here that the users simply preferred teams, even though it's a new system for them, etc. It was just working, and our Skype meetings really had a challenge. Then in the meantime, we, our colleagues uh, running our VPN setup have then migrated to a whole new system with split VPN tunnel. So we now send all the work related traffic through, uh, through the tunnel and we exclude stuff like Teams, etc. That actually goes directly out uh, on our clients today. Mm. But we were, we were helped by the pandemic in, in, the, in the user adoption here because it simply gave them a bit of experience just to switch to Teams and they go up, go uh, go out directly on the internet locally at that point in time, and not fully depend on that was a big challenge. Wow! And and you had said that you would um, people were having so many great ideas and tips and tricks that you set up a Yammer board. Yeah, we we have these Yammer communities that that are already there. So the first few days, I actually spent a lot of time making small teams hints. Oh, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Uh, until people got, we saw a lot of questions, so we tried to make some short stories on, oh, you can do that is in that way. So we help them a bit with ideas to, to get started. So what are you looking at now? What excites you in the new stuff that we've announced and things that are going to be coming? Uh, what do you what do you feel is the next thing that is going to change how productivity happens at Lego? From a P, from HR, uh, in our internal our organization is the People development and organization UND, and that is uh, they are looking into the well-being of the of the employees, diversity, inclusion, and uh, so of course we're looking at the Viva products inside uh, Microsoft Teams, and and how to how can we actually help end users or our colleagues to to make the right decision when to relax, when to work, yeah, a good person, right? So that's. Uh, that's uh, that's something we need to look into, or we are looking into already. Uh, well, employee wellness has always been a big thing in, you know, especially in your part of the world, in Denmark, in Norway, uh, in the Netherlands, et cetera. They're very, very aware of that and how the seasons affect people and that. So how do you, both of you from IT, look at employee wellness at Lego and the importance of it? Our primary task is to support uh, our HR, and uh, we have a whole department looking into the wellness uh, situation, and we have had that for quite a while. So when you announced, like last week, you announced the Viva products, we knew about the product. We are, we are, we are very active in the um, in the programs Microsoft had with customers developing stuff. We do know the names of it, but we mm -hmm. knew the, the building bricks in, in that Viva product. So we have been discussing that with the different departments for quite a while. So when you announce information like that, uh, part, part of my job is also make sure that the right stakeholders knows this. So right. I start communicating that, finding the right, the right uh, small YouTube videos you announce and sharing that information, then having the discussion with them. And then Ulrich like, steps normally in to do the more strategic part of it and, and discuss now when we're doing what. But, but for us, for my part, it's more to be the supporting uh, and make sure people know, uh, because I, I spent a lot of my job to to keep a tap on what is actually happening, uh, both short -term, term and long term. On that note, gentlemen, I want to thank you for your support of you know being first adopters and being first through the the grinder on some of the stuff and having to 
put up with things that didn't quite work the way that you want it to. But in doing that, you have really created a, an amazing model that so many of our customers now look at. And you are the world's most collaborative company on multiple levels from the way that you do business to to the way that that people play with Lego. So it's absolutely tremendous. So thank you for joining me today. I know it's late there, so I'm going to let you get back to your evenings and let you spend some time with your families. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. What a great show. I want to thank Ulrich and Michael once again from Lego Systems for joining me and talking about their experiences in working with all of our different products and services and what they're excited about. It was a great show. Chris McNulty for coming in and chatting about Viva and the new stuff that's coming there. And our friends at Logitech for sharing the meetup system with us. We have a very exciting next show. We'll be doing an Ignite wrap up covering all the great announcements from Ignite. And we have Paul Thurrett. Mary Jo Foley and Brad Sams joining me. So it's going to be a great conversation. We're super excited. Make sure you don't miss it. As always, catch me on Twitter if you have any questions, suggestions for the show. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next episode. Mm -hmm.